Uh, fair economics channel video. So yeah, there's gonna be there's been some crossover on these videos. Uh, I've done a couple of Stefan Malahu responses on the Inmendum channel. And it might I might keep part of that conversation over there on this anarchy thing, which ends up being mostly about economics. And uh, so yeah, it's a problem. So anyway, but this one since it's mostly about the Federal Reserve, I will place it here and I will post a link to this guy letting him know that's where it is. So anyway, Poker Face Todd, uh, I would love to debate you concerning the Federal Reserve, but I don't think you would be willing or even interested. Yeah, well, I don't know. What, you want to have a text debate? Forget it. But yeah, I certainly would live debate you anytime because you're pretty much a truth or a lunatic and it's going to be really easy to show you to be a dupe and a fool. Anyway, it seems your mind is made up before you even spend a minute researching. Well, you have no facts there either. So just another accusation made by sloppy assholes who don't care about facts, who just care about, you know, propaganda. So, I mean, that's a nice slander against my character, but has absolutely nothing to do with anything I've ever done on the Internet. So, again, if uh, you could... Why, why don't you do the same thing and point out where I, like, unlike like you... Um, have made the mistakes here on the internet. I've got 4,000 videos roaming about. Why don't you find one of those and fact check me, fucker. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. Feel free to ignore me and make snide comments. Well, you just made some snide comments, you little trolly piece of shit. And you made them in text. Um, eh, full of expletives. Yeah, I like expletives. What, you have some sort of little god pussy or afraid of words? Um, but your point is lost as you don't back up anything you say. No, that's exactly the opposite. You don't back up anything you say with anything called a real fact. You just make slanderous and implicating remarks that have nothing to do with the truth, as will your website and your whatever, your friend, Stefan Malihu, who just goes on a silly diatribe who just, oh, the... These people stole all your money, and those people stole all your money, and those people, and they, oh, they regulated drugs. What a horror. <laughs> right. We must accept your comments by faith. Uh, exactly the opposite is the truth. I go into this kind of detail, explaining to people why I believe what I believe all the fucking time. More detail than anybody else is ever going to give you. Certainly more detail than what you could argue would be provided by 99.9% of the people making videos or doing uh, talking head style commentary so your fucking critique is again just a lie just more slander because you can't uh, have an honest conversation quite obviously all you can do is lie about people because you're a little fucking trolly weasel gee if you want some basic info on the fed here so I'll go to that page or just keep your head where it is up your dot 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 so no one could f fill in the blank of the word ass, right? So you consider yourself a, a graceful and properly pinkied human being because you said keep your head up your and had the uh, person fill in the blank. Because I'm sure all the decent people would have just said, um, he's got his head up. Where, where would his head be up? Up in the clouds. Yeah, that's what he was saying. Keep your head up in the clouds. <laughs> Fucking silly people on this planet. Really horribly silly. Horribly. All right, ten things every American should know. So I'm going to do number five first, because number five is on the QE thing, and we've already talked about it, so it'll be familiar. And it's just about the biggest pile of crap on the page, so might as well. I mean, the rest of it is just, the Fed has a big nose. The Fed has horns. The, head, the Fed wears the yarmulke. I mean, it's just this, you know, the boogeyman kind of bullshit. I mean, there's just these vague accusations of cabalness, you know. So anyway, here, but this one has some more specific lies, so you might as well get to these. The Federal Reserve is paying banks not to lend money. Did you know that the Federal Reserve is actually paying banks not to make loans? Mm, yeah, no, I didn't know that because it's not true. It is true. Oh my God! No. Section 128 of the Emergency Emergency 
Economic Stabilization Act of 2008 allows for the Federal Reserve to pay interest on excess reserves that the U.S. banks park at the Fed. So here we go, excess reserves that the U.S. banks park at the Fed. So first, he doesn't even understand how the concept of excess reserves got created, that it was money the Fed put in to the reserve accounts, not that the banks put it to the reserve accounts. So the banks can just send their cash, okay, so he thinks, so the banks can just send their cash to the Fed and watch the money come rolling in risk-free. So getting uh, basically the same rate, okay, they lent the federal government $3.5 trillion. That's the truth of it. The banks put the money, you're saying, they put the money in the reserve accounts, which is essentially, you could argue, the same thing. But they didn't, okay? The Federal Reserve put the money in the reserve accounts as collateral for bank digits the banks used to buy securities in the name of the United States government. So the banks are now holding, I'm pretty sure the banks still hold them, um, bonds and stocks in the value of $3.5 trillion. The banks hold that. It's got the U.S. government's name on it as the owner. And what do the banks have in, in exchange? Oh, that's right, they have reserve account digits. <laughs> yeah, and we're paying them 0.25% interest on them. So we're giving them the same rate of interest they'd get on a one-year bond. And this is what you would call risk-free investing. I mean, if you were getting 0.1, 0 0.25% return on your bank deposits, would you really feel like you were making money? I mean, frankly, if you had a million dollars, you would go out and buy a one-year bond and get 0.25% and feel like, oh, I'm rolling in dough. I think you'd have the opposite impression that, wait, inflation is higher than this. I know it. Okay, they can say inflation isn't, but I know it's higher than 0.25% a year. So, yeah, I'm losing money. Uh, so, <clears throat> many banks are taking advantage of this. So, you, you have no concept at all, right? This obviously doesn't have anything to do with banks taking advantage of anything. It has to do with an explicit request by the federal government that uh, the banks make it and save the stock market essentially by buying securities off the market to it's like them putting in an order to buy gold if the federal government was buying gold what would your what would your impression be the same or would that make it so you could understand and you'd say oh they're they're helping elevate my gold price because you're all gold whores right so if the federal government went out to to stabilize the gold price for you <laughs> yeah, you'd probably be like, oh, yeah, they're just doing the right thing. They're, they're just protecting the economy. Yeah, you fucking hypocrites. You tell me. Just check out the chart below. The amount of excess reserves parked at the Fed has gone from nearly nothing to about $1.5 trillion since 2008. So this is, we all are quite aware of this change in policy. So here's 2008. When this guy wrote this, it was at 1.6. It's now at 3.5. So the little line is right up there now. Yes, and it's not magic. It's not blah, blah, blah. We know why it was done. It's called quantitative easing. It was a deliberate proposal, a deliberate plan. No secret cabal, no bullshit. But, I mean, it is bullshit in the sense that this is a gimmick to create the illusion of prosperity so people don't get all panicked and start selling off everything and, you know, buying moats and whatnot. Uh, but shouldn't the banks be lending money to us that we can start businesses and buy homes? You know, well, the fact is, if you go out and find the chart of lending, it goes a little bit like this, and it goes juke, and then it goes back up again, and it goes back, but it's pretty high still. So the number of loans going out is still pretty high. It's not growing as fast, so it's not, there isn't the same growth in loans, but that seems 
perfectly commonsensical when you've had a huge bankruptcy crisis and realize that most of the people borrowing money don't have any real equity in the shit they're buying. And so it would be a little bit stupid to, when you've just been burned by a bunch of bankruptcies, to go out and say, let's go find some more people to give our money to, wouldn't it? Unfortunately, the Federal Reserve is not working for us. Well, they're obviously working for specific purposes that are regulated by us. So I think it's just kind of a lie to say they're not working for us when they're hired by us to do a specific job. So it's just kind of dishonest rhetoric. The Federal Reserve <coughs> is working for the big banks. Again, so it's that you're saying, look, obviously the banks will get something out of this deal. Um, but frankly, if you had $3.5 trillion, okay, in fudgy digits, like, you know, digits you could play with, with for six months, but it wouldn't matter, like bank vault money. And um, you had an opportunity to go invest that. Would you buy one year? savings bonds at 0.25% with your $3.5 trillion. You're telling me you can't, you can't come up with a more creative investment strategy than that for $3.5 trillion? Yeah, sorry. No sale. If they were working for themselves, <laughs> they wouldn't be buying U.S. bonds. Another example of this is the government debt carrying trade debt carry trade. Uh, well, here, well yeah, let's read how it works. Here's how it works. The Federal Reserve lends gigantic piles of nearly interest-free cash to the big Wall Street banks and then in turn these banks use the money to buy huge amounts of government debt. So his argument is that the banks do that on their, their own volition. That the evil banks are trying to make big giant bucks by buying crappy instruments. <laughs> yeah, since the return on government debt is higher, is it? The banks are able to make large profits very easily and with very little risk. Well, again, that's just nonsense. Um, there's no doubt that the banks are making nice billion-dollar fees and, and, and surcharges on these purchases. No doubt that the, the little criminal bankers are doing lots of billion-dollar larceny. Um, but obviously, in a trillion dollar scenario, it's really not that meaningful. Uh, <clears throat> this scam is also explained in a recent article, The Guardian. Consider this. We pretend that banks are private businesses that should be allowed to run their own affairs, but we are the biggest <clears throat> scroungers of public money of our time. The banks are lent vast sums of money by central banks at near zero interest. So once again, it's exactly the opposite scenario that has taken place here. The Federal Reserve has borrowed bank digits at crap interest. We're paying 0.25 percent on a 3.5 trillion dollar loan. They lend the money to us or back to the government at higher rates and <clears throat> rake in the difference by the billion. Yeah, well, again, the billion when we're talking about $3.5 trillion. They don't even have to make clever investments to make huge profits. Well, again, you've proven none of that. So it just sounds like a silly story to me. Uh... That is a pretty good little scam they have got going, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, you certainly this scam isn't detailed here. So it's just a bunch of crap. So obviously, look, deficit spending is big bad news. Um, big bad mistake, especially when you don't intend to pay it back. But these liars aren't helping anybody. So let's just go through the list real quickly. I mean, the rest of these, these are the top 10 things you don't know about the Federal Reserve System, and it's just absolute crap. The Federal Reserve System is a private, let me just give you the, t look at this, the beginning of the end. It's like some sort of religious book almost. <laughs> you know, look, uh, let's see, the beginning of the end, the economic collapse, prepare for the coming up. Yes, it will collapse, but it's probably not going to do it for anything you assholes think are the reasons. 
The Federal Reserve System is a privately owned banking cartel. So it's a cartel. Yes, right. Privately owned, completely government regulated. Both the Senate and the Congress at any time, committees of the Senate or the Congress could have an up or down vote and decide to do all kinds of things. So your politicians that you elect could at any time put the Fed out of business, change the policy, change the rules. They could do whatever the fuck they want at any time. It's completely regulated. The Federal Reserve System is a perpetual debt machine. Well, again, the system, okay, doesn't do the debting. The system. So if you had a government... Whoops, I actually hit one of these evil links. That's probably going to kill me. Survival mom. Wow, that's really interesting. Amazon. So they're selling crap, of course, on the website. Of course, well, there's ads everywhere. Of course, the capitalists and their propaganda. They gotta finance their propaganda. All right, anyway, uh, perpetual debt machine. So we know what the where where the debt comes from. So let's say the Federal Reserve System didn't exist and we had a U.S. government, um, whatever monetary system, or you call it whatever you want to. The F, the SEC. Who cares? Who cares who does it? The regulations would still be the same. The mechanism would still be the same. Everything would be pretty much done pretty much the same. So again, it doesn't really make any difference. So it's just silly. I mean, obviously we chose to deficit spend. Now, maybe you think it would be better if the government printed cash instead of selling bonds. I certainly am not for <laughs> selling bonds. But yeah, I'm not too keen on printing cash either, so... Um, but the idea that cash must always degrade over time, well, I'll get to that one because this is a stupid thing. The Federal Reserve has destroyed more than 96% of the value of the U.S. dollar. So this guy goes back to 1900 and makes, you know, the, this, the typical argument that 96.2% of the value, we all know that the value of everything has gone up, including wages, and that they were doing, wages were doing really well in the 60s and 70s, and working people were prospering quite well. So even though it started off as one system and the, the money changes over time. But just a, any rational person can figure out that you don't want currency that gets more valuable. You want currency that degrades. Because you don't want people to have any will to hoard currency. You don't want them to store it in their mattress. You don't want them. It, you don't want the money in jars buried in people's backyards. You don't want cash to do that because if it does that, that's what creates runs on banks, and that's what creates um, you know huge fluctuations in the value of currency, and will totally sink the boat. That just creates bigger waves in the economy, more likely to sink the whole damn thing. So <clears throat> having a a nice, stable amount of inflation is betty, betty, betty good um, for a rational economy. Four, the Federal Reserve can bail out whatever it wants to with no accountability. Well, of course, there is accountability, just as you're pointing out here. Isn't you having all these numbers demonstration of accountability? The fact that there are records, the money is traceable and followable, and any time one of those Senate or Congressional committees wants to look at the books, they can. They just have to sit there and say, it's, this is what we must do. Um, and But, you know, and it costs money to do that, of course, the audits. Look, I mean, you know, your little Ron Paul lunatics and the rest of these shitheads, they all talk like they couldn't do anything, but they could at any time. And, and the, you know, Ron Paul wanted to audit, um, you know, the gold reserve. And, and he, so he wanted to waste, you know, whatever it was, $67 million or some other number to audit the gold reserve. And everybody knows the gold's there. And at any time, Ron Paul could just take a camera with him. He could go to Fort Knox. And he could go do his own audit. He could just look around and say, gee, do I see $17 billion worth of gold here or don't, don't I? And it's a tiny amount of money. I mean, the gold is not a huge asset of the United States government anymore. It just isn't.
No one's claiming we, we have a whole bunch of money in a bank somewhere, retard. So anyway, here's, here's a, the other accusation. The Federal Reserve can bail out whoever it wants with <coughs> to with no accountability. Well, of course, there is accountability. And all this money that this guy's listed was all money that was borrowed from, you know, for, for, for times that went from 10 minutes to two weeks. And all this money was paid back. So here's a, an impression that all these billions and 2.5 trillion dollars were somehow thieved or stolen or all that kind of crap. And no, it was just meaningful underwriting. I mean, it was just the fact that the Fed in the middle of the crisis just said, look, I'll keep track of it. You have a claim. I'll give you the money on your claim. Um, you know, but we're going to sort this out. Who owes who what? Because all the banks got all fucked up because nobody could figure out who owes who what, who was really bankrupt. Um, and so the Fed just said they're going to figure out who's bankrupt. So, you know, just lie some more, fuckers. Here's number five, the big lie about QE. Um, <clears throat> number six, the Federal Reserve creates artificial economic bubbles that are extremely damaging. How so? Um, you know, the, uh, the whole concept of lending and whether we should be paying low interest rates or high interest rates is an interesting question. Um, whether um, having low interest rates, I, I would say substantively low interest rates are great, okay? But if you don't intend to pay the money back, they're not so great. <laughs> so, but I mean, certainly going to um, non-fractional, you know, going back to a gold standard, um, certainly you wouldn't be able to borrow money because there wouldn't be the, first off, there wouldn't be the gold to borrow on and um, the interest rate payments would be so high that you couldn't afford the loans. So again, it, it's all just kind of bullshit. We know there's two kinds of loans, well, let's say four kinds. There's collateralized loans and uncollateralized. And then there's loans people have they intend to pay back and loans they don't intend to pay back. And you can have a combination of those. So um, it really does matter what game is being played. But quite obviously, when you give people um, a broker to go bid on something for you with money you don't have, but with a loan rate you're willing to pay. So yes, people are showing up to bid on houses, and they're bidding with loan rates. I have a 6% loan, I have a 7% loan, but I can get $500,000, I can get uh, 1.3 million. You know, they're just, they're just showing up and bidding with their line of credit. So, I mean, quite obviously that just elevates uh, prices. But quite also obviously, a lot of people took full advantage of this system for 70 years. They lived on this nice little extra income they got from the value of their house. And don't think people... My father made more money reselling houses than he made in terms of profit anyway off his work, off, off his job. He certainly did better than his pension. So buying houses gave him more money than his pension will ever pay him. And that's kind of silly, right? He gets paid less for working than he gets paid to play the, um, you know, golden asset game. <clears throat> the buy low, sell high bullshit. The Federal Reserve System is dominated by big Wall Street banks. The entire banking system is dominated by big Wall Street banks. Yes, that's the truth. Walmart dominates um, retail. That's just the way of the world. Google dominates the internet. Unfortunately, that's what people have encouraged, is big, giant, monstrous, hideous, evil consolidation. What are you going to do about it? But to put it on this list as it's part of the cabal, this is just idiotic. Of course, the Federal Reserve does sub the substantial amount of its business it does with the banks that have most of the clout. Yeah, that's the way it should work. It is not by accident that we saw the personal income tax and the Federal Reserve System both come into existence in 1913. Yeah, well, we know that the personal income tax was tiny, uh, almost minuscule at that time, 
And so again, you rather have unprogressive taxes. So you think you're one of these, so, so, so somehow you think this is a cabal or a evidence of something that somehow I should think the personal income tax is a bad thing compared to all other fees paid. I should think property taxes are a better way to take people's money or sales taxes are a better way. Is that what you're telling me that it's part of a cabal to steal my money to progressively tax wealth? That that's somehow an obscenity to what I would think would be rational, that we would force the kings and the lords and the nobles to pay a higher tax? That should somehow offend me? <laughs> I mean, number eight is reason for me to go hug the Federal Reserve. Ah, you stupid idiot. Uh, number nine, the current Federal Reserve Chairman, Ben Bernanke, has a nightmarish track record of incompetence. Well, again, that's perfectly, you know, what, what difference does it make? Every single, you could, take the, you could take quotes from any human being on Earth and you could find the ones where they, whoa, they got that way wrong. I mean, I could tell you stories about Einstein where he just sat there and was talking about how the only way you will ever split an atom is to, you know, go out in the middle of the night with your slippers on and spin around four times in a circle and shoot a gun with no bullets at a bird that doesn't exist. You know, or some kind of crap like that. So, yeah, so we should just mock Einstein forever because, whoops, got that one wrong. So you're just going to play that game and say that means something? Oh, he was wrong once, so therefore he's wrong about everything. You're wrong about everything, so I guess I could assume you'll never be right about anything. <laughs> yeah, so. And number ten, the Federal Reserve has become way too powerful. Gee, that's kind of vague. <laughs> yeah, so what's the point? It's not more powerful than Congress at any time. The Federal Reserve can be completely regulated, completely changed in terms of every single thing it does. At any moment, uh, you know, a mere majority vote in any committee can change the Federal Reserve policy. So anyway, you just got a bunch of crazies here. This guy, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the real... You know, you just get the idea of that these are the lunatics. My question is, why aren't we sheeple not slaying men, slaying the men responsible for these crimes? So we should go out and slay these people. Why aren't, you know, slay them for what? Again, oh, that's right, we voted for Ronald Reagan. We voted to cut taxes on the richest people in the world. So, knowing that we weren't going to have enough revenues to pay the bills, and yet they didn't cut the federal government. So, Reagan promised to cut it. He made, instead, spent huge amounts of money on the military, um, knowing it has to be paid for by loans, you know, money we borrow. There was no other solution there. And he got reelected. So, he did it for four years, right in your face. He borrowed money, borrowed and spent, and people voted for more of it. Of course they did, because it's all credit card money. So whose fault is that? I think that's the we the people. So if you want to go out and slay somebody, why don't you slay the voters? Why don't you sl go find out who voted for Ronald Reagan and go slay them? <clears throat> why aren't local militias raising up and storming every Federal Reserve branch and taking out the leadership? Why? <laughs> I mean, this, this is going to get you on a watch list, buddy. Why are we, the sheeple of the world, not taking our... <clears throat> futures into our own hands and putting an end to the progressive monstrosity, uh, progressive, this progressive monstrosity, he's afraid of progress, that has become the U.S. government. Listen to this, this progressive monstrosity, can, can you believe somebody puts those two worlds together? Oh, what a horror, we're, we're growing up, we're becoming progressive. Oh, the crimes these men have committed are the... Uh, are at least worthy of the death penalty. Why has no one filed murder charges against the President of the United States? Well, I'm sure, yeah. Let's file some against um, Reagan and Bush, right? What the fuck is going on here? You are crazy. That's what's going on. So anyway, so Bruce and all these other lunatics all defend this crap, and then some woman says something like, Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I really, my first reaction is to go shoot something in the head. Don't you have a better plan than that? And then they explain how, Shut up, bitch. We gotta kill these fuckers. And, you know, that's, this, this is all just a bunch of, We gotta kill these fuckers. 
It's the Fed did it. The Fed did it. The Fed did it. Pathetic. So, obviously, this is... This conspiracy doesn't prove anything about the Fed. But what it does prove, especially this nonsense, is that we are living in idiocracy. People are way too stupid for their mobility. People need to be in cages. They need to be on leashes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They need to be protected from themselves. Ooh. They have to need to go into their little carrier at night. Keep them safe. So anyway, let's see what else is new. Five major forecasts of 2014. Well, that ought to be good. Top eight myths of golf swing. Wow, that ought to be really interesting. End of America. Leave now. The biblical money code. Well, that's a good one, right? The biblical money code. Oh, probably lots of horn talk in there. This is just such a scary world. So, Mr. Um, whatever, Poker Face Todd, you are a retard. You are retard. Just like your icon. So at least you got your icon right. It's kind of a retard icon. Yep. <sighs> it's like a South Park. Yeah, South Park, Ted and Fred baby image or something. Yeah, that's the baby. Yeah, the baby, like, Stan's brother or something. Yeah. God, you're dumb. Anyway, until next time. Remember what that, what's that little kid's name?